So, Penny Proud's friends. Oh, I'm so tired of y'all. What's her problem? Over a year ago, I made two separate videos, one long form and one short, going over probably the most controversial episode of the Proud family, Louder and Prouder. Between them, they have well over 2 million views. And as a result, I periodically get notifications from people leaving comments about how fake Penny Proud's friends are. And after all this time, I find myself asking, why are they like this? I mean, my introduction to the show, besides the Lilo and Stitch crossover I barely remember that I don't even think the friends were present for, was a YouTube video essay about how fake every single one of them was in the original show. Even Zoe. So, you would think that, with the revival of the show, there'd be, like, an effort to make them less horrible. And I think there was an attempt, but it evidently didn't work out that well. Now, there are two possible reasons for this. The first is that Penny having a terrible friend group is unironically an integral part of the show's identity and they couldn't change it any more than they could make Sugar Mama a loving and doting figure in the family. That'd be hilarious. The second is that it isn't so much a part of the show's identity as it is its structure and just part of how it tells its stories. The former is funnier and accurate to some degree, but I think the latter is true and more interesting. To test this hypothesis, I decided to go over all the examples of Penny's friends being less than ideal in Louder and Prouder to determine the reasons why these girls are written this way. And my conclusion is that it took a special combination of factors and mishandled execution to create this impression. So let's get into it. If I miss one, feel free to tell me. In the premiere, New Kids on the Block, the friends are actually pretty normal. Michael is helping La Cienega with her puberty problems and beyond light ribbing I'd normally expect, they aren't that harsh with each other. The only one causing any drama is Maya, who isn't even a friend yet, but she dislikes Penny for entirely superficial reasons. I went more into detail on this in my Maya video. Maya basically acts as the obstacle to Penny's goal of, well, befriending Maya, leading up to the confrontation at Shuggies where she tells her off. But Maya doesn't really change in this episode. Go watch my Maya video. In the second episode, Bad Influencer, the R is in brackets because internet. The friends all get into the makeup boy craze. This motivates Penny to start her own channel leading to the rest of the plot. And as she begins to absolutely lose her mind and be the bad friend in the group, Maya cancels her to bring her back down to earth. Basically, they're the only reason she doesn't just laugh makeup boy off and go on with her life. I'd like to make a note that this isn't necessarily them being bad friends, but I do want to bring it up because it becomes relevant when I reach my conclusion. Episode 3, it started with an orange basketball, is when we really start getting into how much these girls suck, as La Cienica tries to snatch Karim up while Penny is off being the best basketballer in the galaxy. Maya's there to misunderstand why women's basketball isn't profitable and support La Cienica for some reason. It honestly doesn't have much plot relevance beyond Karim choosing to spend time with Penny instead at the end of the episode. In episode 4, Father Figures, Dijane decides she wants to be the inciting incident and announces Maya and KG's whole having two dads thing on the internet. Which, well, they weren't in the closet, obviously, but that's clearly not the best thing she could have done. She could have just done nothing. Back to the episode, some people go full homophobic about it and Penny goes full reverse that. Episode 5, Snackland, is almost remarkable for how unremarkable the conflict is. Penny's singing voice changes and after some conflict, she gets kicked out of their band because she doesn't match their sound. I'm pretty sure I've seen this exact plot structure twice on Disney alone, even if I can't remember an example. But shock of all shocks, Dijane is actually mostly supportive in this episode. In episode 6, Get In, and episode 7, When You Wish Upon a Roka, nothing relevant really happens. You could talk about them leaving Penny in college, but frankly, they were doing the smart thing, she should have gone with them. Episode 8, Homeschooled, has Penny discover that one of their teachers is living in the school, and after she gets her friends to promise not to tell anyone, Dijane immediately snitches and the teacher gets kicked out, leading to her living with the Proud family. Episode 9 is actually pretty unique. It's the first episode focusing on one of the friends, specifically La Cienica Boulevardes, and her competing over her quinceanera with La Brea Avenues. 
These are some Dragon Ball ass names. The relevant parts are Lassianica being bossy and frustrating her friends, egged on by La Brea's prodding and attempts to steal the party. Shout out to Dijune accidentally destroying Keiji's drone so he couldn't rescue Lassianica. That's relevant. The two part season 1 finale and season 2 premiere aren't really that relevant beyond Lassianica's continued attempts to steal Karim, which is just consistent characterization at this point. Our next example is the second season's third episode, Curved, with Dijune getting so into her relationship with Darius that she starts being, well, a cartoonishly bad friend to Penny. But then again, this is a cartoon and the whole thing probably falls under the don't take it too seriously banner when she immediately re-gives Penny's gift to her boyfriend. But this is another example of not being a very good friend, even if I think it's kind of minor. Also, I just want to say, the debate in this episode was terrible, on both sides. Regardless of what you think of reparations, no one here could argue their way out of a paper bag. And I know it's because one side is meant to be a straw man and the other is meant to be a vehicle for a poem about slavery, but it still bothers me. The last relevant episode is episode 6, The End of Innocence. <sighs> Do I have to? Again? At this point, I've gone over this quite a bit. The girls get on Zoe's case because they found out the guy who asked her out only dates white girls. It's really bad. Some of my most popular videos are about how bad it is. So I guess ultimately I'm thankful this episode exists. But honestly, it's so bad, I think it's what broke the camel's back about the friend group in this series. The episode's whole premise is seriously undermined by how easy it is to interpret the whole thing as just jealousy. Zoe stole the boy everybody was crushing on. All the girls wanted Noah, I think that's his name, to ask them out and when he asked the unattractive girl of the group, they jump headfirst into the first thing they assume is probably the reason. But now that I've gone over all these examples, I think it's become a lot clearer exactly why Penny's friends have to suck so badly. And it isn't even unique to them, it's basically a result of how the show generates and escalates its plots combined with its over the top style. The show basically uses Penny's friends as a source of escalation for its plot lines in order to keep them going. The most understated yet blatant example of this is when Dijane accidentally wrecked Keiji's drone so he couldn't rescue Lassianka ahead of her and Librea having their heart to heart about why they are such jerks to each other. Need Penny to get on Makeup Boy's kiss? Make all her friends fans. Need to create a character moment between Penny and Karim? Lassianka can try to steal him. Want the homeless teacher to live with the proud family? Dijane flips on her to wipe out her family's lunchroom debts. Want Penny to take a stand on bullying the children of gay families and, you know, actually become friends with Maya? Have Dijane announce it to the world. And this all has a negative effect in that, well, Penny's friends wind up making things worse. A lot. And for most of these episodes, I find myself thinking, was there really not a different way to get to this point? And I think this is actually a compounding problem. Dijane getting really into Darius, to an extent, and Lassianica being bossy at her quinceanera are honestly relatively normal plot lines and character beats for them to go through, but they become the icing on the cake of arguing about Penny's friends being fake. Between the prideful Lassianica, the presumptive Maya, and the loudmouth Dijane, these characters are basically designed to be obstacles. Zoe, Myron, Michael, and KG are like the only ones who are generally unscathed, and I suspect it's because they are either white or boys, so the writers don't really give them much agency or a say in what's happening, especially in the worst episode. Girl, we do not have enough time for that conversation. Oh, you're right. Bye. Actually, I prefer not to be in this conversation anymore. Let's go get some punch, Darius. And here's the thing. Penny's friends aren't the only ones. You know who I find annoying? Oscar. Penny's dad drives a lot of the problems with his greed and idiocy and kind of flows under the radar. Maya may have gotten Penny cancelled, but that's because of what Oscar did. Oscar would annoy me a lot more than all of Penny's friends combined if the universe didn't make sure to punish him so much. Largely because, you know, that's a grown ass man. Hell, everyone lost their minds when La Sienica got a chance to get into the Olympics. Want to do an episode where Penny lives with Sugar Mama? 
Have Penny act out of character like a spoiled brat so her mom can lock her out of the house. Yes, even Penny isn't immune to this. Okay, she's kind of immune to it, but if the show really, really, really wants to do a plotline, it will also push her under the bus. It's my fault. I had you sent to boot camp, and I owe you an apology. In fact, I owe all of you an apology. I was wrong. The only one who is truly, completely immune, as far as I can tell, is, well, Karim, who the show really wants you to like to the point of absolving him of any blame in the Locking Penny Outside episode. And I'll be honest, if not for the end of Innocence, I think the girls would have flown more under the radar in this aspect, at least for the people who don't remember the scummy things from the original series. But that episode completely wipes out all comedy, which usually softens the blow and focuses on such a serious matter, and then accidentally makes the whole friend group look so mind-numbingly toxic it reflects negatively on everything else. Every show needs something to drive the plot and cause problems. And when you can't consistently rely on the supernatural or villains, sometimes that something is a character who acts like a jerk or does things recklessly. And the Proud family is just all too eager to make that character one of the main friend group. You'd think the gross sisters would fit nicely into this role, but they honestly aren't even that relevant. The person that I consider the show's, well, villain, Wizard Kelly, also isn't that relevant. Kelly is almost exclusively focused on Oscar, who I think kind of deserves a lot of the shit he gets. Like I just skimmed every episode and I struggle to think of one where Kelly is directly involved in whatever the kids are doing besides the season 2 finale where he calls the SWAT team on them. Between its attempts at social messaging, bad writing and the fact they are kind of the most commonly present characters to mess things up, Penny Prowse just got a lot of escalators around her. And then. Compare this to a similar series. I'm currently watching the daily life of high school boys and the characters are pretty stupid to drive the comedy of the series. Like tricking your friend into wearing his sister's clothes stupid. There's also Ed Ed and Eddie, where the main driving force is the main characters being stupid or greedy as well as being enemies with basically every other character. The Simpsons also has the main characters have a lot of flaws. And Springfield basically has a lot of characters to drive motivation if needed. And there is in fact discourse about the family members, especially Homer and Lisa, being bad. Now I think these series all handle these situations better than Louder and Prada, but I hope this drives my point. It also shows another reason for the focus on Penny's friends being considered bad. Penny, and the fact that she's normal. I think because she's meant to be a role model, Penny generally has to come off as the level-headed one of the cast. And that reflects negatively on everyone else because it just has a lot of the audience wishing she had friends who were as, well, level-headed as she is. All the high school boys act like idiots so we don't find ourselves thinking they should ditch each other. Double D is consistently the sanest member of the Eds but honestly not by much and he's still an escalator. I suppose Marge would be considered the sinnest member of The Simpsons, but the show has so many episodes that she's gotten to either show off her flaws or the show gets to really emphasize why she loves her family regardless of theirs. Also, she isn't usually the target of their antics. But Penny is unambiguously the main character of her series, and outside of her being a recklessly rebellious teen for an episode, which a lot of people agree is out of character but also not any great sin on her part and that time she went absolutely cancel crazy, she's still just basically normal. And while we have been given so much on how she loves her crazy family and they love her back, this doesn't really apply to her friends whose antics almost always affect her because someone needs to get these episodes to 20 minutes. The common saying is with friends like these who needs enemies, but in this case it'd be more accurate to say without enemies you're gonna need friends like these. Are Penny's friends basically a thorn in her side sometimes? Yeah, they are very purposely written to be like that. But this video is meant to ask the question of why? And I think I've done a pretty good job answering that. In my script I wrote I think I've done a pretty food job answering that. Anyway, how do you think I did? Tell me in the comments if you also think I did a pretty food job answering that. And while you're at it, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content. Thank you and good day.